Wales. This photo of the Sussexes announcing their pregnancy was heavily doctored. That tree, Kosha, wasn't even there. They photoshopped that tree into that photo. In the countless rumours and conspiracy theories surrounding the royal family, an old but never-ending controversial question is raised. Do Archie and Lilibet, the children of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, really exist? Many people have doubted and searched for evidence that Meghan never gave birth to these two children. Is there any concrete evidence that Archie and Lilibet not only exist but are actually Meghan's biological children? I will reveal the truth right now. First and foremost, why is there such great secrecy regarding who was publicly financed by the British government to deliver Archie? Let's face it. Meghan turned down the two top obstetric gynecologists who give their services to the royal family for free, and they were videotaped looking perplexed as they left the palace. So, who actually delivered Archie, please? The British taxpayers who paid the bill should demand to examine the medical charges, including the champagne head wedding, which was also invoiced to the government and cost thousands of dollars. Some contend that Meghan's weight gain following her pregnancy is normal for baby fat. Did she have any facial or ankle puffiness prior to her maternity leave? That is the outcome of alstolactation hormone treatment. And why is a moon bump necessary after giving birth? When a baby is delivered, hardworking women typically lose the bulge that is if they don't overeat. She may have some swelling and loose stomach muscles, but for an apparent yoga guru, she still looks six months pregnant. Please let me know the hospital where he was born. Once more, the hospital stay, use of the labor room, laughing gas that Harry drank down, the multiple epidurals that Meghan required, etc. were all covered by government money. She was never present, according to the Lindo Wing of Portland Hospital, where royalty typically delivers, and neither the admittance nor discharge records include any evidence of her presence. All of this data is consistently entered into hospital logs, which are formal records, a patient must sign a risk disclaimer and themselves out if they leave the hospital without being formally discharged. Why did Kensington Palace announce before the official announcement that Archie was delivered via surrogacy? When the truth comes out, only a sibling who is first in line for the throne and destined for monarchy would go to such lengths to hide his ass and escape being accused of being part of the plot. What, furthermore, would prompt even a profoundly mentally challenged father of a just-arrived first kid to remark on how much he had changed in just two weeks, when, in actuality, the official notification had just been unveiled to the public on Buckingham Palace grounds. Then, according to Harry and Spare, Meghan was released from the hospital after three hours and driven to Frogmore Cottage, which is more than an hour's journey away, even though it is customary for a lady receiving an epidural during labor to stay bedridden for six to twelve hours. What medical professional would jeopardize his license to sign the paperwork, discharging a newborn royal three hours after delivery, following two epidurals and stitches, particularly while the baby was being transported home without professional medical supervision? The infant could regurgitate and aspirate, the mother could suffer a hemorrhage, or the stitches could burst from sitting in a car and the rapid impact. This story makes no sense at all. Not even after an epidural birth would a VIP be released from the hospital that same day with stitches. Megan has a medical diagnosis of geriatric motherhood at the age of 35. All new mothers must receive education on how to properly feed and care for their infants. Was nursing staff available at Frogmore? For unprofessional behavior, the night nurse who was hired for the next night was fired before the shift ended. The only person left was her mother, who is said to have smoked marijuana while growing Megan. Fortunately, she only gave birth to one child about 40 years ago and never held a position in the medical field, so helping the Queen's great-granddaughter would not be a possibility. I wonder if the night nurse took a picture of the cord, which had miraculously mended, while it was covered in bandages. Since she was a medical expert, she had the right to document any abnormalities, and one of the first things to do was make sure the cord and clamp were patency for discharge. Moreover, Make sure the infant doesn't get hypothermic. Did you know that a baby's body temperature is not controlled by the medulla oblongata, the brain's temperature regulation center, until three months of age? Let's have a look at the photo below, which shows Megan nursing Archie at a public event when he was just a few weeks old and had not yet had his first vaccination. In late May and early June, the south of Brazil experiences 16-18 degrees Celsius of central heat. Similar to this lovely winter's day here in tropical North Queensland, 
I'm dressed in a t-shirt, vest, leggings, and wool socks because, as we age, our blood vessels narrow and we gradually revert to infantile body temperature regulation, especially in our feet. Yes, this video has already been seen by the public and on social media, and Megan's negligent treatment of the child has drawn a lot of criticism. However, as a primi gravida mother, how would she know how to raise a child if she didn't give birth in a hospital? Doria, a midwife, would provide new mother's advice on bathing, feeding, changing diapers, and shielding their child from potential hazards in the environment in addition to handling infants. Keep newborns isolated from the public for the first 12 weeks of their lives to prevent disease exposure. Steer clear of windy situations as they absorb wind, which can lead to wind aches, food vomiting, etc. Always keep their feet covered with booties or socks since newborns are susceptible to leg cramps, which are extremely painful and can cause hyperthermia. And if they are sobbing for no apparent reason, try massaging their legs and feet softly to prevent this from happening. Feel for warmth in their hands and feet. If they have an ear infection, you can smell it, so be alert to any strange smells coming from their head. Examine their head for any excessive heat, and note their temperature if they seem hot. Why hasn't Megan ever shared her knowledge about caring for infants with all of her mouthing off and loud talk? Not a word, as her only experiences are lavish spending, stealing high-end items, flying in private, and romantic vacations— now that Archie is five years old, it seems she is attempting to smuggle herself back into the castle so she can conceal him in an attic until she is forced to disclose his academic standing, as well as his physical and developmental state. Living in Los Angeles, she proved to be more trustworthy than mainstream media when the birth was announced. According to a birth report she shared, Mary Diana Mountbatten Windsor was born on June 4th at a women's health center in Los Angeles. When I clicked on the link that she also shared, I saw it in black, blue, and white. I therefore vow to God that I saw it with my own eyes and that I will not swear to God until knowledge is confirmed as gospel truth. Perhaps I wasn't familiar with taking screenshots at the time, or perhaps I didn't anticipate the record being cleaned up. It was cleaned up, but it's clear that no one anticipated it would disappear or that copies of the original recording would circulate over social media. The closest proof I can find for my claim is this Reddit post by St. Megan. The kid, Lilibet Diana, was born at Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital with Dr. Melissa Drake, according to the follow-up record. It appeared suspicious when the clinic's employees announced on social media that no births had taken place that day. This suspicion was increased when Dr. Melissa Drake was spotted in Los Angeles on June 4th. The Abgini closed her Santa Barbara clinic in just two weeks, I'm therefore going to discuss Lilibet. Though there are restrictions on how long eggs can be preserved owing to the possibility of Down syndrome and other fetal abnormalities, I still think Harry is the biological father. Megan's eggs have passed their expiration date. I think there's a chance the surrogate gave birth to twins and was only supposed to keep one of them. However, in line with a leak of an emergency caesarean that occurred three months early, Megan either never paid the remaining debt or one child died, and she gave birth to the other full term. Though it is all conjecture, everything makes sense given the sequence of events. That's right, we need to keep questioning the existence and parentage of the children. I don't believe for a moment any child was born on the 4th of June 2021, coinciding with an exact weekend date for the late Queen's Jubilee planned for 2022, publicized by the British government in November 2020. Meghan and her moon bump with Oprah in March 2021. I agree. If Archie exists, he is Harry's, but not Meghan's. We need to keep picking away at this. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I want to know what you think about these issues. Please express your opinion in the comments below. Hope you will always be cheerful and happy. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.